so many moms tend to forget themselves. I go through this too. To the point that you don't even remember that you are a human being and you also need to be cared for. So today, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 self-care tips for moms. And if you struggle with any of the things that I've mentioned, this is a video you definitely want to watch. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Toya C. Gregujana. And today, I, like I said, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 self-care tips for moms. I go through this all the time when, you know, I literally forget myself that I'm a human being because you are naturally a nurturer, a carer, and then someone who looks after other people. But um, it's important that you also look after yourself because you really cannot give what you do not have. And I've had a lot of moms ask me, oh, Tuyosi, how, how are you able to find time to, you know, look after yourself, you know, to be intentional about looking after yourself? So today I'm going to share some easy tips with you. You know, it doesn't require you doing so much, especially when like myself, you don't have help. At the moment, I do not have any help. So I try to um, fit my self-care time around still looking after my family and not feeling like I'm neglecting any of my responsibilities. So tip number one is my, my, my main thing, and it is exercising regularly. If you know me, you know that I am a fitness you know, enthusiast. Um, I love the fact that you know exercising helps your brain, helps you to be alert, and then you release hormones that makes you like, you know, that makes you happy. You have that feel good feeling throughout the day. So I would say that as a mom, because of the amount of work that you face, that you have to do daily, you should incorporate exercising into your daily routine. It's, 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 it's gold actually, because then you're, it makes you stronger. It makes you alert. It makes you happy and nothing compares to it. Tip number two, journaling. So um, I know myself that most times when I have a lot of things to get done, I tend to have, you know, anxiety attacks and literal panic attacks. And um, I realized that writing down the things that I want to do or, you know, ideas that are in my brain, I'm able to kind of like um, relieve myself of the stress. So um, it makes it easier for me to actually even get these things done because then they are written down, then I can follow through and say, okay, this needs to get done. I need help with this. This person needs to help me. So journaling really, it really, really, really helps me. And then even with... You know, things like, I, have a I also have a gratitude journal where I talk about things that I'm, you know, thankful for, that I'm excited about. It's, 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 it's therapeutic. Like, it's something that every mom needs to do for themselves because we have tendency, we have a tendency to feel like we're not doing enough or to feel like, oh, you know, we're a failure. And then you journaling makes it easy for you to go back to the things that you have written down and then you can say, oh, I'm actually thankful for this. But when you don't write these things down, it becomes difficult to achieve and then it becomes difficult to count and measure and be thankful for. So definitely journaling. Tip number three, go for a massage or a pedicure. Just pamper yourself. Really, there's only one life to live and you can only be a good mother if you're a happy woman. And it's important that we also um, prioritize our own, you know, personal feelings, how we feel. For me, sometimes when I go for a massage, it really, really helps me to relieve stress or... You know, something as little as having a pedicure in a nice, you know, salon ever so, you know, once in a while would definitely, definitely boost your, you know, boost your, um, your feeling, boost your self-confidence. And there's nothing more rewarding than having that, you know, that fresh, good feeling from inside. So book a pamper me time, a spa session, a massage, a pedicure, once in a while, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. Tip number four. Reach out to friends you haven't spoken to in a long while. For me, because I moved back to England, it's been some sort of isolation. It's almost like being in a hole. But days that I feel like, you know, I'm not doing enough and I'm just feeling down, aside from talking to family, talking to husband, sometimes you just don't want to talk to them. I reach out to, you know, my soul sisters that I haven't spoken to in a while, the ones who I know that they understand me, you know, they're kind of like in the same, you know, maybe in the same shoe as myself at the time, or maybe people who just, you know, generally understand me soul-wise. I reach out to them, have conversations with them, and they will be on the phone for a while, you know, they, you know, they would cheer me up, and that really, really helps with, you know, coming back to that place where you um, value yourself, coming back to that place where you are happy with yourself, where you feel like, okay, so I'm not just in this hole, 
feeling totally isolated and all of that. So I would reach out to, you know, friends I haven't spoken to or it could just be somebody you know that talking to them, you know, make them, makes you feel better. I would definitely reach out to those kind of people. So communication with people that you haven't spoken to in a long time really, really, really does a lot. Is is a great self-care tip. Tip number five, have a me time where you declutter your mind. Honestly, there is, you know, as similar to journaling, decluttering of your mind does a lot for you. For me, because I have so many things going on for me at the same time and I'm having to do different things, I always need time to sit down in the little corner in my office or in my zen space, just literally just emptying my mind and just, you know, putting um, name to emotions. If I'm going through anything, I put name to the emotions and I address it and say, okay, this is not good for me, that is not good for me. Now, when I say me time to declutter your mind, it's not just to even put out the things that you want to put in a book. Sometimes it's just a time to declutter your mind of, you know, anger, you know, bottled up thoughts, or just general confusion. Sometimes when you're confused, you're upset. And then as a person, you're not um, performing optimally. So finding time to just sit by yourself. My children, they know. Once I'm in my, my Zen space and they come and knock and I'm like, oh, I'm having some me time, they understand it. So that's, that's really something that, I, you know, I would encourage everyone who is, you know, experiencing not having enough time to look after themselves to actually imbibe. Plan it. I have my own plan. I have a certain day where I just go into my space and I do my thing. I have a set time. And I'm there spending like an hour or two with myself, just asking myself, what have you been able to do in the past week? What's going through your mind? Oh, you're feeling down. Why are you feeling down? So that I understand where the problem is coming from. I trace it and then I can address it. So definitely a me time for mind decluttering is very, very essential. Tip number six, laugh at yourself. Really, life is, there's just one life. And there's no point being so hard you know, nobody's going to get out of your life anyway. So even when you fail, even when you make mistakes, it's important to just cut yourself some slack, honestly. Because sometimes, because we're so rigid, because we're so worried about achieving, we're so worried about achievement, we're so worried about growing height and all of that, we become so harsh on ourselves that we're, we literally put ourselves in a box. So sometimes we ourselves are our own problems. So laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously. When things don't go the way that you expect them to go, do not beat yourself about it. I mean, I understand that you will feel bad because I still do feel bad when I make mistakes. Yeah, you will feel bad, but don't dwell there. Don't, you know, get sucked in to the point that you start to load self. You start to feel like a failure. You start to feel like you can't do anything right. Because, I mean, the feeling of, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're grinding yourself in the, the pain of making a mistake, that's what eventually happens. So take it easy. Learn to say no. I mean, capital N O no. Honestly, because you're a mom does not mean that you don't have a limit. Because you're a mom doesn't mean that you have to take on everything. With my children, when mommy says mommy needs her time, they let go. And I have, I have a rule of thumb in my house. If they're even screaming, if they're arguing, if nobody's dying, I'm not going to move. Because the truth is that. If you don't learn how to say no to, you know, your, even your children, your family, or people, people overstep boundaries. You have to create boundaries for you to remain sane. And it is in your sanity that you can deliver your job and your role as a mother, as a carer, as a wife, and then as a human being. So learn to say no. If something is out of, out of line with what, you know, what you accept if based on emotions or based on tasks that need to be done, let people understand. Be assertive about it. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a, nothing is cast in the stone. If somebody wants something um, of you and you can't give it, let them understand that you can't give it. If you can give it later, tell them, give them a later date. Don't do things to please people now and then displease yourself. When these people are gone, you start to resent yourself. You're upset because you, you, they, they, they've come to circumvent your procedures, circumvent your process, circumvent, you know, your own planning to suit them. You understand? So learn to say no. There's nothing wrong in saying no to people, even family. If it's not convenient for you, it is not convenient. You are a human being before, you know, you are somebody's wife, before you are somebody's mother, before you are somebody's child. So it's important to prioritize yourself and say no if need be. Have brunch with friends. There's nothing wrong with, you know, once in a while, anger with your friends, you know, gist with your friends about old times, 
talk about children, talk about different things so that you can relieve yourself of whatever stress you may have been tightened to your chest. Because at the end of the day, I said it before, this life is only one. And, you know, nobody does, I mean, no, no human being is an island. And it's in, you know, creating good relationship and maintaining good relationship that, you know, we all flourish and we all kind of like enjoy life. So I would say, yes, I've been in Nigeria for a couple of weeks and all I've been doing literally is brunching with each and like with different friends. And this is not because I've got so much time on my hand, but this is because relationships are important. You understand? Relationships are important. They need to be nurtured. They need to be uh, maintained. So have fun with friends, brunch, go out with friends. If you decide that it's travel you want to do, plan a little travel with your friends. I mean, as far as it's within budget, I'm not going to ask you to go and, you know, um, overdo it by going beyond your budget or just putting yourself in trouble because you want to, oh, so your sister self get it. No, I'm just saying that whatever it is that is within your means, enjoy it. You know, you can go to a restaurant, you guys, are, you guys can even decide to have a dining in somebody's house. That's, that's, that's a good idea. You can have a dining in somebody's house where one person is cooking if, if there's limited funds. So, yes, definitely brunch with friends is, is such a great idea. Like, I've been in Lagos, I've enjoyed every single brunch I've had with all of my friends because I haven't seen them in a long time. So, yes, that really, really works. Look good to feel good. I'm a fashion entrepreneur and I'm a fashion girl all around. Honestly, there's this confidence that comes on you when you look amazing, guys. I don't know anything else that gives me that feeling of, you know, um, what's the word now? Self, um, self-confidence than the way that I look. Because the truth is, if you're going to look in the mirror, you better like what you see in the mirror. And as a mom, the chances that you're not going to even remember that you own a mirror in your house is very high. Especially because of the kind of... Um, responsibilities you're faced with the things that you've got to do in a day on a daily basis and a weekly basis you forget yourself sometimes you don't remember that you have to make your hair but you need to pay attention to it because then it affects the way that you feel so it's important that you put effort into looking good you know I have low cost and I still try to make sure that it looks amazing it, you know, it complements my outfit at every every point in time you know, I'm not saying be extravagant, the little that you're going to, whether you're modest, whether you're, you know, edgy, whatever. Just make sure that it's decent enough and then it gives you that confidence, that little boost when you go out and you're around people and then you can really, really, really feel like yourself. So definitely look good to feel good. Give yourself a kitchen break. It's not every time that you have to be cooking, 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 cooking. Sometimes you need a break from that kitchen space so that you can actually you know, get yourself together and then let new ideas even come as far the cooking self. It's okay for you to, re to you know, tell your other half and say, oh, I would like us to have a takeout today. I just need some break from the kitchen. There's nothing wrong in it. I do it. The days that I don't feel like cooking, if you know me, you know that I love to cook for my, for my, for my family. But the days that I don't feel like cooking, I would tell my husband, can we order out? Can we order takeout? Because at the end of the day, what is important is that whenever you're delivering your duties and doing these things, there should be some joy that comes with it. And then if you feel tired, if you feel like, you know, you just don't feel like being in the kitchen and you're forcing yourself, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because like I said before, you are first of all a human being. And only a happy woman can make a good wife and a good mother. So give yourself a break from that kitchen if you don't feel like it. You know, make alternative, um, alternative um, arrangements. Have takeouts. There's nothing wrong in it. If anybody's going to judge your mother, would by that. Their loss, not yours. So definitely do that. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you do not miss any one of my videos. Also, let's connect on social. Follow me on Instagram at TGJonah and on Twitter at TGJonah. Thank you.